The following program is sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network. Welcome to another episode of Building Wisconsin. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, we're following the Wisconsin Pipe Trades State Apprenticeship Competition here in Kakana, Wisconsin. We have a lot to cover on today's show, so let's get started with Jeff Canales from Local 400, who's hosting this year's event. It seems to me we're very fortunate here in the state of Wisconsin to have a highly skilled, highly trained workforce. And a lot of that is because of facilities, training centers like this one that you offer at 400. You're right, Stu. We're very fortunate to have these type of facilities in the state of Wisconsin. These guys are qualified to work in your hospitals, your power plants, your homes, and they also earn a good wage which sustains the economy in the local area. Well, I'm anxious to learn more about the contest itself and the competition. But before we get into that, let's step back and talk about the pipe trades. Who comprises them and what role they play in our communities? Well, the pipe trades are consisted of seven locals in the state of Wisconsin, makes up the Wisconsin Pipe Trades Association. Within each organization comprises plumbers, steam fitter construction, steam fitter service, sprinkler fitter, and fabricators. So it's more than just bathtubs and sinks. You're talking about the construction industry as a whole, and I assume that includes the hospitals, the power plants, all the infrastructure? It's industrial piping, commercial piping, light commercial down to residential. Really, when you look at the benefits, it's twofold. Personally for them, they're gonna enjoy a fabulous career, but even more importantly for our communities as a whole, the end results will really speak for themselves. You're absolutely right, Stu. I mean, these guys love what they do. They bring a lot to the table and quite frankly, they're leaders of their community. Well, I love an opportunity to see this competition, see your facility, so I'm gonna catch up with Gary Korn right now to learn more about the specifics of what's going on here today. Thanks, Stu. You know, Gary, as I was just talking to Jeff, there is a lot of activity going on here today. So before we get into the competition itself, let's explain who's here and a little bit about what this competition is trying to accomplish. Well, I guess the end result, we're trying to find the best competitor in each division. And, and this happens to be our HVAC service tech competition. And so there's gonna be a number of different stations here with different trades represented? Yes, there's HVAC service here. We've got plumber, welding, pipe fitter, and sprinkler fitter. That must make for an interesting competition for bragging rights in the state. Absolutely. They're learning something, going to take back to their local that they've learned here, whether they won or lost. And they're all friends by the end of the competition. They've, they've got to meet people from other parts of the state that they normally wouldn't have been able to. It's a great event. Okay, so what are we looking at right here at station number one? What we've got here is a chiller. What it's actually doing is giving cooling to the building, whether it be a, a small commercial building, a hospital, um, maybe even some kind of manufacturing plant where they need chilled water for, for cooling. Okay, and so there's chillers 
that they need to work on in different industrial or commercial buildings out there. This is one of the trades that this young apprentice is going to encounter. So there are real world applications being taught here. Our proctors have put problems into the system and the service tech has to go through and diagnose, find out what the problems are and fill out a service ticket and talk to the customer after he's done. So, so they're getting... Pretty much all the way through a, a service call that he'd normally do on his daily work. So really, it takes us to the real world. This is what they're gonna eventually encounter out there. You have to diagnose it, you have to solve the problem, make the customer happy at the end. And that's what they get graded on is, did they do it correctly? Absolutely. Okay, so that. this takes care of the HVAC service side. There's a lot more, let's go take a look at them. Sounds good. Gary, what's going on in this area? This is our steam fitter competition. And uh, this would be another real life situation uh, that any of our steam fitters would be doing on a day to day basis. Okay, so what is the role of a steam fitter? Heating, cooling lines, process lines in factories and commercial buildings, hospitals, power plants. Really, so a lot of the bigger infrastructure in our cities, that's where you'd find the, the role of a steam fitter? That's correct. Now, did they have to do this welding as well? Everything they did on here, they had to cut this with a torch, weld it up, fit it up, and keep it straight. Okay, so before this started, you probably had one chunk of black pipe. They had to cut it down, look at the plan, weld it all together. Exactly. And then they're judged on the length, the quality, and the appearance. Who are the judges here at this competition? There are proctors from all over the state. Each one of the locals have brought proctors in. And here, just like the other competitions, they have a sheet that they're following. And the quality and accuracy is what they're being judged on. And then there's one other term you've been using, and that is rigging. What exactly do you mean by rigging? Rigging, it's, this looks like a small section, but sometimes this can be very heavy pipe that they're rigging and lifting up safely into position. Okay, so that was at the, the super structure I saw outside in the parking lot? Yep. Give us an example of what would be going on in that aspect of the competition. In there, they're using everything properly. That's the biggest thing, and safely, so that they're getting their piece of equipment up where... You might be talking a big chiller or a big boiler or something, some pump, and they have to raise that up in a certain way? Absolutely, sometimes they have to invert it to get it up through a tight spot and, and get it back down and set it in place where it needs to be. Or a large section of pipe that can weigh tons. Boy, you know, in a competition like this, the pressure must be immense. It's gotta be a great feeling when they're done and if you're fortunate enough to be crown champion. And these guys handle it very well. They're doing great. The great thing about the Wisconsin Pipe Trades Apprenticeship Contest, it gives the, the apprentices from different parts of the state and the different unions and the different crafts the opportunity to mix and compare notes and think about how their training programs work compared to others, not only at the local level, but at the state level and the regional level. It really tests how well our programs are working. It's a healthy competition that brings out the best in these guys and, and it makes them sweat a little bit and really makes them want to perform and, and make their local proud of them. You know, Daryl, there are a number of different ways of heating water in a home. And here at the training center, we have an opportunity to look at some of the different makes and models of water heaters that a plumber or a homeowner might encounter. So let's take this opportunity in Plumbing 101 to explain how they operate and provide some safety tips for a homeowner. Okay. On this case right here, we have a B-vent gas water heater, which means that this vent goes all the way up through and out your roof. So on this particular model, you need to vent this particular one all the way out the roof. If you have a power vent water heater, which is like this, you're gonna have a blower motor on the top that takes the gases and then goes through a PVC pipe and it goes out the side of your house. Electric water heater has no venting at all on it. It just has electric elements on there. So there are different types to be aware of out there. Okay, what about from a safety standpoint? Anything a homeowner should be aware of when we're talking about water heaters? 
Well, most of your water heaters have safety controls on them so that if it reaches a certain temperature, it will automatically go off. If there's no gas to the pilot because of the thermocouples bad on it, it will automatically shut off. So that's a safety feature itself. A TP valve on the side, if it builds up too much pressure, it's made so that this will blow off and it'll go onto the floor. And I know a pressure relief valve, if you see any water leaking out of here, never under any circumstance cap it off, correct? That's correct, because if you do, you could have a small explosion in your house. And unfortunately, a lot of homeowners think they can just run down to the hardware store or the big box store, pick up a water heater and install it themselves. But judging by this vent, this is what can happen if you do it incorrectly? That's correct. You'd never want to stick PVC pipe on a B-vent water heater. It's strictly made for a power vent water heater. For more information on Building Wisconsin, Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com. Welcome back to Building Wisconsin. We're following along this year's Wisconsin Pipe Trade State Apprenticeship Contest in Kakana. And let me tell you, the competition is as fierce as ever. So let's continue with training coordinator Gary Korn from Local 434. Now, Stu, here's our plumbing competition. And so this is the plumbing station. What are they getting graded on here? Well, what they're actually gonna simulate here is roughing in a bathroom, one you'd see in any residential house. We've got a sink, a toilet, and a shower. And they're graded on everything that it would take to install this. Is there a time limit to what they have to do it correctly? Yes, there is. Eight hour time on this one. Really, and so the apprentices are here working on this particular mock-up for eight hours and they're gonna get graded, you said, on quality, on correctness. And, cor and yep. when we think about the real world application, obviously it's a bathroom. All buildings seem to have bathrooms. But can we even go more general? How would you define a plumber? He's responsible for the domestic water into any of our buildings, uh, residential, commercial, industrial, and the wastewater out after it's uh, done being used. So domestic water in the supply line, wastewater out the drain lines. There you have it. What about other aspects in this particular competition? Here's one station. Do they get graded on other areas? Yes, they also had to do a welding project, soldering and brazing project, and some rigging and knot tying also. This is a pretty intense competition here, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, you said this alone is eight hours, and then they had to do a lot of work just to get here, and then another half day on brazing and welding and, and such? Just like all the apprentices, they had to take a written test before they got here too. That wasn't included. What's involved in that? It's a general knowledge test and a Wisconsin code test. They all have to comply to those codes in the state of Wisconsin, and that's what they're judged on or graded on. I, I just say. love it how the competition really takes real world applications, tests them on it, and puts the pressure of competition on to make sure they perform at the best. Absolutely, it's what we're doing in the field every day.
So this is the fire sprinkler safety area of the competition? Yes, it is. Here's our CPVC competition. First of all, let's explain how a sprinkler system actually operates. Well, I'm sure everybody thinks that they all go off at one time, right? Sure. And it's actually heat activated. So each individual sprinkler head, if there's a fire or a heat source that's too hot right near it, only that one's going to go only off. Only that one's going to go off. Is it fair to say the role of a sprinkler system is to save lives? See, absolutely, and property. And so you might get everything wet, but the number one focus is to get the occupants of the building out. Yep. Okay, so as far as this competition is concerned, what's going on at this station? We're, like with the other categories, they're judged on accuracy, speed, and quality. And so there is a speed component to this, how efficiently they can install a system? Yep, they're all timed. And quality, these guys look like they did a great job here. Similar to the other stations we've been at, do they have to do a written exam and rigging as well? Written exam, that's done before they get here, and a rigging competition also, just like the other categories. Okay, so what's involved in the written one as far as sprinkler fitters are concerned? General knowledge tests again, just like the other ones, and code specific, things that they have to follow. Uh, sure. And Wisconsin it, code. And with all of these different stations, this entire competition, you're really trying to apply real world scenarios to the competition. That's correct. And you know, when you think of the pipe trade as a whole, you think of piping. And one thing that I noticed going around here, there seems to be a lot of threading going on. You take a, a piece of metal tube or a pipe, but it's up to each specific trade to turn that into a usable component. Yeah, we put all kinds of piping together, whether it's uh, welded, threaded, or glued in this case. Building Wisconsin is made possible by the members of Plumbers 75, proudly serving their contractors and helping build Wisconsin for over 100 years. We all know the most basic form of life requires clean water to survive. On Earth, we need it to drink, cook, clean, and it touches just about every part of our quality of life. Here in Wisconsin, we appreciate the value of clean water even more as we live alongside the Great Lakes. Yet we often forget to think about how water gets to our homes, schools, and businesses, and then safely back to Mother Nature. Where does all the dirty water go? How is it fresh and clean every time we get a glass of water? Who makes this happen? The answer, plumbers. It's the plumbers who are trained, mentored on the job, and have progressed through a five-year education program that takes them from apprenticeship to a master of their trade. It's plumbers who are committed to a career and have been trained to protect the health and safety of our water system and make sure you never have to think about where it comes from and where it's going. Yes, we're fortunate here in Wisconsin to have an abundant supply of clean, fresh water but even more fortunate to have a highly trained and committed workforce to keep and deliver it that way. Plumbers 75, supporting the plumbing trade in Southeast Wisconsin for over 100 years. Excellence in workmanship combined with a proven commitment to customer satisfaction is what has set Horner Plumbing apart for over 40 years. Horner understands that each project is unique and their highly skilled staff is trained to assist you with all of your plumbing needs. That's why they only use quality products and hire true craftsmen who have demonstrated pride and skill in their chosen field. So whether your project is residential or commercial, single or multifamily, or simply a service call, you can rest assured that the professionals from Horner are there for you every step of the way. Horner Plumbing and Plumbers 75, proud to be building Wisconsin. For more information on Building Wisconsin, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and be sure to watch additional episodes on YouTube or at our website, buildingwisconsintv.com.
Oh, Gary, in this booth, I sure like to see this. I love to look at the latest, greatest pieces of equipment. And really, when you consider a career in the trades, this is what you get to work with, or if you want to, you get the latest, greatest pieces of equipment. How are you using this in the competition? Well, you're absolutely right. This is the latest and greatest. Uh, this, this machine here, you do stick, MIG, and TIG. And that's what our competition entails. You have to do all three of those processes in the welding contest. Okay, so you have one station here set up just for welders, and then you mentioned in some of the other stations that, like a plumber, for instance, has a portion on Yeah, on they, they did a small portion just on stick, where they had to weld a little bit. The steam fitters also that we saw, where they had to do a little bit of the stick. But the welding is an eight-hour project just for welding. Holy cow, so walk us through that competition. How does the eight-hour contest begin, and then what happens during it, and then ultimately, how are they judged? Well, they start off with getting pieces of pipe and fittings. They have to use a torch a little bit to cut in the saddle, and then they're fitting that up and welding it out with whatever process is on the drawing that they're given. Okay, so everybody's given the same plan and it's up to them to efficiently and correctly weld everything together? And then the judges or proctors go from there. Well, you know, over here I saw the judges looking at a piece that looked like it was freshly welded up. Was this the end result of the competition? Yep, this was one right here. Like I said, all three processes are covered in this competition. And so it started with a couple different sizes of pipe. They had a plan, they had to cut everything off and yep. properly weld it in here? That's exactly what they did. What are they looking for when you talk about what makes a good weld versus what doesn't make a good weld? Well, any porosity or undercut where they're not tying in the beads together and every process is used on this piece of pipe. Okay, it's a competition. We all want to know who the winner is. But more importantly, I want to know how our apprentices you know, fare up against when you compare them to the other ones in the nation. Because after all, earlier in the show, Jeff said this is part of a national competition. Yeah, from here, the uh, state winners go to a district contest, which uh, includes 11 states in the Midwest. That's going to be held at Chicago this year. From there, the winners go to an international contest in Ann Arbor, Michigan. That will be in August. How have we been doing in the last couple of years? Well, two years ago, we had the winner in the welding category, and last year we had the HVAC tech uh, winner. So Get out of here. We're talking good. internationally. We produce the best apprentices in their particular field. Absolutely. They both did great. Boy, it's got to make everybody here in the Wisconsin pipe trades extremely proud, but really, any viewer out there, anybody living in the state of Wisconsin should be extremely proud of our highly trained, highly skilled workforce. They should, and they should feel good about the people that are installing piping. I remember doing this last year, and this is a pretty decent example of, uh, of, I think, what we all did here as well. So this was fabricated by one of the apprentices today. Yes, it was. Boy, how do you begin a competition like this? You start with getting all your math figured out. Before you cut a single piece of pipe, I think the best way to do it is to sit down and figure out every dimension for every piece of pipe you need to cut, then double check it before you even pick up a tool. And, you know, I look at it, it looks like a piece of artwork, but obviously there's some functionality that ultimately gets tested in here. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to put that through a pressure test after it's done to make sure that every one of his joints holds. Did he put them together in the right order? Did he braise the ones before he soldered them, or did he do it the wrong way and melt the solder right back out? Oh, really? So little tricks of the trade. Were you paying attention in class out in the oh, field yeah. to know that you're doing it correctly? <laughs> well, obviously, it's great to have you on the show because you not only won this competition, but you won the international competition as well. So yes, congratulations. I did. Thank you. I thought it looked decent. Despite the fact that I had my deduction in there, I was relatively happy with the way it looked when I was well, done. Well, obviously the judges concurred. And I guess my question to you is, when you have a competition like this going on, there must be an intense amount of pressure. What, are, what is going through your mind and how do you handle it all? The only thing that's really going through your mind is I gotta make sure I get this done in the proper amount of time. It's as close as I can possibly get it and it won't leak when they pressure test it. Those are, the, those are the things you're thinking about the most. You're not worried about the guy next to you, the guy on the other side of you, what's going on in the room outside. You're just thinking about, I gotta make sure that this can. Okay, so you won the Wisconsin test. You move on to Chicago, and then ultimately, 
on to the international competition in Ann Arbor. Take us through that experience. Well, the whole thing, I mean, it was, uh, it was a very similar experience after learning what I learned at the state competition here in Wisconsin, moving on to the regional competition where we got you know, fitter apprentices from all across the upper Midwest. It's just trying to remember it's no different than another day at work. It's just work. The difference is there's somebody watching over your shoulder a little bit more closely. And you know, in the real world, a lot of times there is somebody watching over. Ultimately, the end user, the customer who's hired your company to have you do it, a lot of times they're looking over your work, making oh, yeah. sure that it's done right. So a competition like this is really applying real world scenarios, even though it might look a little different. The brazes, the solders, the welds that we saw, they're testing you on all those capabilities? Well, I think a lot of it comes down to is if we have well-rounded apprentices. We want to prove that we have well-rounded apprentices. We want to see how does everybody compare, I guess, in the nation. Is everybody's training program up to stuff? And oftentimes, so many of us take all these trades for granted. You never think of them unless they don't work. And that's a testament to the highly skilled, highly trained workforce we have. Rarely do they fail. I appreciate you coming on. Hey. And again, congratulations on your championship. Thank you very much. The preceding program was sponsored by the Building Wisconsin Television Network.